Welcome to a special edition of Planet Waves TV. My name is Eric Francis Coppolino, editor of Planet Waves, here with a special edition focused on the Brexit vote, the astrology of the Brexit vote, which I've been looking into. I have not said much about it. I'll account for my mistaken prediction in a second. Uh, the UK yesterday, Thursday the 23rd, uh, in a shocking historic vote that we may see is actually not that shocking, but no less historic, uh, chose to leave the European Union. Since the end of World War II, there has been uh, an, an increasing effort to focus all of Europe into being one country, first an economic interest community, then a kind of wider community, and then, uh, and then ultimately around 1998, 1999, uh, Europe functioned as one country. The, uh, the borders between countries were removed. It was a, a beautiful thing. And uh, a, a common currency was introduced. I, I don't know how many of you remember traveling in Europe when every country had a, a different type of uh, currency. You'd have Deutschmarks and uh, whatever they had in France and Franks and Franks and France. And England kept the pound sterling. England kept its its currency, uh, which is interesting. It always remained uh, one kind of one step back from this whole European Union thing. And uh, at some point over the past year or so, there was a, a referendum called and a, a vote, which has got the keyword in the press, Brexit, B-R-E-X-I-T, meaning uh, British exit from the, the EU. And yesterday, uh, that vote was taken and by a about a 2% majority, something like 52 to 49, uh, it, Brits voted and, and members, they're not really Brits, it's, it's UK citizens, voted to uh, back out of the European Union. Thing is, this is a non-binding vote. So it's, it's binding in the social and political sense, in other words, that uh, me members of parliament and so forth will be held to honoring this, but it's not a legally binding referendum. Parliament, if it wants, can completely ignore this. Of course, members of parliament would have to face the wrath of voters, which American congressional representatives and senators know absolutely nothing about. There is no wrath of the voters to face. You can say one thing in Washington, do one thing in Washington, come back to your district and do another thing. It seems like no one cares. It's time for Americans to start caring, however. So anyway, uh, I am not an expert on this issue. That's the thing uh, I want to say it out front. But I have some clue about the astrology of it and, and, and a theory of the astrology and also a theory related to the internet, as may maybe you've uh, been following. I have been doing my best to assemble the history of electronic media with uh, with with a particular cycle in astrology that's coming up right now, and I'm, I'm going to show you uh, that chart in a moment. But before we g go there, I want to tell you one little really wild point of history, which is that the modern United Kingdom uh, was founded by a, uh, a, th a theory called a treaty called the Act of Union. And the Act of Union was passed on the first day of the 19th century, 1 1 1801. Right? So that, that in itself is exciting because it's you know, the, the, the first day of the new century, by the way, is the is the is the year that begins in one. So I realized that we kind of celebrate at the beginning of the third millennium in the 21st century with uh, Y2K at the end of 1999. But in reality, the 21st century began on January 1st, 2001, because there is no year zero. So anyway, the, the, uh, the Act of Union Treaty takes effect at, at midnight on 1-1-1801. And it just so happens that a few miles uh, across the English Channel and uh, down the river, in Sicily on the same exact day, a planet was discovered. And, and this might not be so special were it not the second planet ever discovered by science. The first planet discovered by science was Uranus, discovered in March of eight, 1781. There, up to that time, uh, there, were, there were no known moving planets beyond Saturn. 
end, uh, then one was discovered in eighteen uh, in seventeen eighty one, and that was Uranus, and that began uh, an age of history. You might think of it as the age of technology, and this is why the planet Uranus is often so closely associated with the age of technology. Skip ahead uh, twenty years. There's no planetary discoveries until 1-1-1801, the very day the Act of Union goes into effect and a, a new thing called Ceres is discovered. Now, uh, astronomers were not into planetary discoveries that, at this time. Uh, a guy named Piazzi discovered it. This Italian, Sicilian astronomer discovers it in Palermo. And they don't really know what they've got. They didn't know what Uranus was at first. They had to figure out that it was a, a planet. They didn't know what Ceres was, but turns out to be the very largest asteroid. Now, by by very largest asteroid, I mean that uh, there's millions of objects in the asteroid belt. Some of them are the size of peas and baseballs, and some are big enough to, uh, you know, walk your dog once around in 15 minutes. And some, like Ceres, uh, are as big as the moon of a planet, and uh, in the case of Ceres, it occupies 30% of the mass of the asteroid belt, 30% of the mass. And then the other 30% is in approximately the next nine largest asteroids, things like Vesta and Juno and Pallas. And then the final third of the mass of the asteroid is occupied by the countless untold millions of objects uh, orbiting in this band of space between Mars and Jupiter. And on this day, on the day that the Act of Union took effect, Ceres was discovered. The asteroid belt, therefore, was discovered and became the first dwarf planet was discovered. And so there is something coincidental with the formation of the United Kingdom. Now, the United Kingdom, this new thing, newish thing that is formed on 1-1-1801 is like the, the newest incarnation of the, the British Empire. Formerly, what was the British Empire uh, became this new entity by treaty called the United Kingdom of, I think, Great Britain and Northern Ireland and embraced uh, Northern Ireland and, uh, and, and uh, Scotland and Wales and so forth. And, and it's, it's a kind of a, a new country. Now, of course, it existed, but as a political entity, right? So re remember this, that a planet appears that day in Europe. All right. So let's take a look at, first of all, the uh, a very simple chart for the um, the Brexit vote. And this is going to be the same chart I use for the regular regular edition of Planet Waves TV today and uh, and similar to the cancer birthday reading that I'm going to do later today. So as you know, the, the big there's two really special distinct things happening right now. Uh, one of them is that Mars is stationing direct in Scorpio. That, that happens on Wednesday. So Mars has been retrograde in Sag and Scorpio now for about 10 weeks, and we're at the very end of Mars retrograde. And so anything that happens in this time period of history, anything that by, by which I mean like a few-week window uh, of, of uh, reality, that, that would include the, uh, the, the, the mass shootings in Orlando. It would include the... the um, gun control uprising going on in Congress right now. It includes anything that happens now because astrology is a process of synchronicity. It's not a process of causation. It's a process of matching symbols in the environment to what you might think of as symbols in the material world. Okay, so it's a, it's kind of a matching process and you're looking for pictures of things and when when something very distinctive happens in the world and something very distinctive is happening in the astrology there is a match and and what we get here is a a big one so the two things that are going on now specifically now meaning in, in june 2016 are that mars is stationing direct in uh in scorpio there's Scorpio, there's, there's Mars. It's in blue, not red. Okay, and then at the same time, there is this triple conjunction going on of Eris, of Uranus, and notably Ceres. 
is a triple conjunction happening. Now, Mars moves fast, but it just happens to have picked 23 and a half degrees of Scorpio to stop for its station, retro, station direct. That's highly unusual. Mars is a fast moving planet, but it happens to be making this visit to this degree of Scorpio for a long time. And at the same time, these planets have just lined up at 23 and a half degrees of Aries. So there is a direct energy line connecting the Mars event and this, first of all, extremely rare Uranus Eris conjunction, which last happened in 1928, right at the dawn of the digital, at the, at the dawn of the electronic age and the digital age, meaning that the transistor was patented right around the time of this conjunction. So nobody was thinking internet or Wi Fi or, or iPhones or anything like this, but the, the invention that made all those things possible. The transistor was patented in 25, then the first radio broadcast and the first TV radio station license and TV broadcast happen right in the exact conjunction. So this conjunction is the dawn of the electronic media age right there. And happens that when this conjunction happened, it was exact on June 9th for the first time. There'll be two more exact ones later this year and one earlier, uh, one later this year, one early next year. For the first iteration, series is in the picture. We just completed it, so it's only separate by about half a degree right now. So we have a pattern of Mars, Quincunx, Eris, Uranus, and Ceres at the same time, and that is the uh, let's let's say the mundane astrology of the Brexit vote. Now there there are there are there's an idea behind this, and I, I cover it in an article that you might want to read. It's right on the cover of planetwaves.net. Uh, we'll click to the main page, or we'll link it directly. But poke around, you'll find it. It's on our, our blog, and we'll leave it up top uh, all through the weekend. Um, is that there, there is um, an effect of the uranus Eris conjunction, which I think, first of all, sums up the effect of the Internet, and one of the effects of the internet is to water down identity. It turns identity into even more of a fiction than the Eastern mystics tell us that it is. In fact, it, it thrusts the whole concept of Eastern mysticism into a kind of inadvertent, un, uh, the, of identity into an inadvertent, uninvited, electronically driven by the transistor, the new god, Eastern mysticism. And there, there is a struggle to preserve identity. And this is working on an individual level, but it's also working on a, a collective level. And I think that the one of the most distinctive things about the, the separation of the UK, which is yet to happen, because remember, it's an it's a, it's a opinion referendum right now, not a lawfully binding referendum, so we'll see what happens. It will probably go through. But to me, this is a, a rebellion against this identity crisis that we're having. Now, young people don't have a concept necessarily of what this identity crisis is unless they've done a lot of reading and they've read some of the uh, some of the better psychological works of the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, and they understand this incredible quest toward personhood uh, that, that was going on um, kind of in the in the high tide of the electronic era but also in the pre-digital era where this got really got cranking where it became like uh critical that that uh, the identity meltdown became critical and i think there's a backlash against that identity meltdown that's going on that we're seeing uh in two ways one way is the upsurge of vi violence uh one of the most important functions that violence serves uh in a low vibration level is uh, to assist the quest for identity. Identity is formed through abrasion, basically. Now, the abrasion can be normal conversation. It can be, uh, it, it can be arguing with your editor. It, it can be arguing with your wife or your lover, or your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Identity can be pushing back against your parents, or identity can be taking a gun and shooting people. Or, in the case of a country, it can be a, uh, a thing of like, wow, we're you know, uh, there, there's that line from the clash, like, wouldn't it be great if England were for Englishmen again? And th there's a, a panic going on in terms of the 
uh, the first of all, there's wars going on and there's migration going on. And so there's a migrant crisis in Europe. If you've been following this, you're not going to really get it too much on the American news. But if you listen to Democracy Now!, which is on the Planet Waves front page every day, if you watch the BBC or listen to BBC, BBC World, if you're outside the UK, you know there is a migrant crisis. And the migrant crisis has been causing an influx of bodies, living bodies, into England. They, they make it up to the north of France. They... they uh, and then they smuggle themselves through the tunnel, the t tunnel under the English Channel. And this is a great concern, and a lot of them are Muslim. And, and there's also going on a backlash against Muslims. This has been largely inflated and made up. I remember before it really even existed. Um, it, it wasn't really, uh, you know, terrorism starts, you know, becoming a story in the 80s, but it's not until uh, America goes to war against Iraq uh, in 1990 and 91, that you hear people start to say things like sand nigger. I couldn't believe it the first time I heard that. Like, who are those people in uh, in in Iraq? Uh, that was the word that was going around. You don't hear that word anymore, but th th that is what was being said in 1990 when the United States uh, invaded uh, the Middle East in the form of Operation Desert Shield and then started bombing Iraq in nineteen in, in nineteen early nineteen ninety one. So there is a a an uprising of racism against Arabs and against Muslims. They're not the same thing. They're conflated. There's plenty of Muslims from India and the United States and Africa, but uh, we conflate Arab and Muslim in our kind of twisted so called thinking here. So my sense is that this is an identity backlash. There is an identity crisis going on, and, and there is a qu quite a bit of jingoism. It's popular now. And um, let's look at, so, so there you go. The, the Internet is here, and, and Mars is here struggling. What Mars really wants is to define its identity through the sex that it wants, but, you know, that's too naughty. Okay, for some people. All right, let's, let's, look, at, uh, let's look at a chart that I, I cast a couple of a week, a week and a half ago, uh, that I was going to write about, uh, but ended up not writing about. But but we did have the the chart cast. Okay, so I'm going to fill the screen with this. First of all, here's the chart for the Act of Union. Oopsie Daisy, this is my. By the way, as you know, I've been concerned about the internet uh, making reality seem ever more ephemeral. So I thought I'd use like a thicker, heavier graphic to to make it more real. Okay, so the Act of Union, here's the chart for England. 1-1-1801, one, one, uh, not very clear, sorry about that. When you do the quotidian progression, secondary progressions, to the day of the vote, uh, I'll explain someday why I use quotidian uh, pro progressions, but there, there is a, 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 a solid technological reason, technical reason I do it. Progressed horoscope advances the horoscope one day per year. As my friend Rick Levine says, it's not supposed to work, but it does. And you, when I cast the chart for uh, the progressions, oopsie daisy, where am I here? For uh, the Act of Union UK for Thursday, I, I found uh, that there were a whole shit ton of planets in Leo. Look at this. Look at this. Ceres in Leo. Uh, Sun Leo. Jupiter Leo. Oh, and what I didn't mention about this chart, I didn't really conclude my discussion. Ceres, England's planet, is part of this chaos, this identity chaos. It's right in the conjunction of Uranus and Eris. Now, when we go to this progress chart, kind of a theoretical chart, um, but nonetheless a chart, we see a lot of Leo. And I took one look at this chart and I thought, look at all that Leo. They're, they're, they're going to vote. They're going to take this whole vote in, the, in a nationalist direction. They, they are, uh, they, they, they want to, those, those, Separate people want to preserve their identity. They don't realize there's so many other ways to do it, and you don't need to like pull out of a economic treaty. And 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 besides, unless they unhook those islands that make up the, the British Isles and move them out to the middle of the Atlantic, they're not going to be able to do anything about the immigrants. Just because you change a political status doesn't mean that you know whatever. So. Uh, that was my original prediction. Uh, then Joe Cox got shot, uh, the, the um, British member of parliament who's the mother of two kids. And I, I was emotionally swayed uh, by, by that. And uh, that's why I said on Planet Waves FM that I, I this past Tuesday that I believe that, um, that, that the, the uh, UK is not going to go for this. Turns out 
Uh, they have uh, they have uh, shocked the world in something that's not that shocking and have basically um, bailed out on being part of the EU, or at least that is the opinion. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how this plays out. David Cameron, the prime minister, has announced his resignation. Uh, th this is likely to be perceived as a kind of a conservative backlash now, another conservative backlash. We always seem to be having those in, uh, in England, and we will see how this plays out. Uh, that is my basic summary. Not sure how informative uh, that was. I'm planning to be back Sunday with a regular edition of Planet Waves TV, taking a week off from Planet Waves FM, and uh, then I'll be I'll be back up. Uh, I'll be back with you. Great fun uh, doing this. Thanks for the uh, in, in unbelievably incredible traffic the past week. I'm glad to see there is an interest in this new thing that I'm doing, which is um, video. I wish I could see your face. It's nice to show you mine. And uh, I will catch you in a couple of days with the regular edition of Planet Waves TV, which will be focused on Mars stationing direct in the, in the specific, uh, let's say, emotional qualities of that uh, of that event. I'm going to really get into the identity issue and the 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 do I find my identity through violence or do I find my identity through sex? Those do seem to be uh, two of the major choices. Uh, sex would include art. You're not going to really uh, do much art if you're, you know, shooting people. Some would say that's a form of art. Certainly it's shocking, but becoming ever less so. All right, so there you go. Uh, click on our subscribe thing on, on uh, Planet Waves TV, please. And uh, if you like my work, if you're one of these people who's been following me for five or 10 or 20 years, please get a subscription. Renew, revive, re-up your subscription to Planet Waves. That's how we do this. Lots of people working behind the scenes here at Planet Waves. Great to be with you. Thanks, and bye for now. Mm -hmm.